more Perth Gathering, you are here for Stories with Anna. And today I am going to tell you one of my all-time favourite stories. And this story is all about a king who lived a long time ago. But this king, he was very proud and he thought he was better than everybody else. And he would like to boast. And he would like to make other people feel not as good as him. But his daughter, the princess, oh, she was as different to her father as chalk is to cheese. For she was so kind and loving. She never boasted. She never thought she was better than anybody else. She always made sure that everyone around her felt appreciated and cared for. And the princess, she had one favorite hobby. She loved to read. And if she didn't have anything else to do, she would creep up the stairs to the palace library and she would grab the biggest book she could find and she would sit and she would read it. And the only thing that was missing in her life was someone to read her books with her. And it was her birthday soon. She was going to be eight years old and she told her daddy, the king, that she wanted nothing more for her birthday than for him to come and sit with her in the library and to read her favourite book with her. But the king, he only liked to do things that made him look better than everybody else. So he did not like this idea at all. And he decided he was going to get his daughter the best gift for her birthday, whatever that might be. So the week before the party, the king went for a dinner with all of the other kings from all of the other kingdoms. And he sat up really tall in his chair. And he said in his proudest voice, <clears throat> my daughter has a birthday next week and I am going to get her the best present ever. And all of the other kings, they all looked at each other because they were all also really proud and boastful. And they all wanted to be the ones to get their daughters the best present ever. And the king who was sitting next to our king, he looked at our king and he said, <laughs> you think you can get your daughter the best present ever? <laughs> and I got my daughter <laughs> a pony for her birthday. <laughs> Beat that. <laughs> But the king next to him looked at the first king in disgust and said, a pony, that's rubbish. <laughs> For her birthday, I got my daughter <clears throat> a castle. The first king was a little disappointed, but the third king, the next one along, Oh, he had something even better to say. And he drew himself up and he went, <clears throat> very nice. But uh, I got my daughter an island for her birthday. <laughs> I think that's the best. <laughs> and the first two kings, they felt really sad because they thought their presents weren't as good. But the next king, the fourth king along from our king, he looked at the other three kings and he went, <coughs> really? <coughs> yeah, so, so, so. <coughs> that might be all very well and good, but I got my daughter <coughs> a country for her birthday. <laughs> 
Nor did the other kings look at each other. How could anyone beat that? Surely that was the best gift. And our king, still sitting up proud in his seat, thought, I have got to beat this. So he looked around and down and up. And he had an idea. So he said to all of the other kings, Yes, well, that might be very well and good, but I am going to get my daughter the moon for her birthday. And all of the other kings, the moon, the moon? Could that be? That's not possible. Oh, that really is the best gift ever. And our king, <clears throat> he felt very proud of himself. So our king, when the dinner was over, he went back to his own palace and he stood out in the garden and he looked up at the night sky and he saw the stars and the moon above him. And he called his daughter down from her bedroom and he said, daughter, I have decided I am going to get you the moon for your birthday. And his daughter who really only wanted her daddy to read her favourite book with her, said, Daddy, you can't do that. I'm the king. I could do what I like. So the king reached into the sky up towards the moon, but he could not reach it. So he started to jump up and up and up and up and up. But however high he jumped, he still couldn't reach the moon. It was far, far, far too high. So he sent, turned to his servants and he said to his servants, Servants, <clears throat> go and bring me the biggest book in the library and I will stand on it and I will reach the moon. And his daughter said, Daddy, you can't do that. I'm the king, I can do what I like. So the king sent his servants and they went up, up the stairs to the palace library and they got the biggest book in the library, which just so happened to be the princess's favorite. And they took it downstairs to the garden and they put it on the floor and the king climbed on top of it and he reached up towards the moon and he jumped and he jumped and he jumped and he reached and he reached and he reached, but he could not reach the moon. Hmm. But he had an idea. So he turned to his servants and he said, Servant, <clears throat> bring me every book in the palace library. And his daughter said, Daddy, you can't do that. I'm the king. I could do what I like. So he sent his servants and they went up the stairs to that palace library and they got every single book from every single shelf in that library and they took them downstairs and they piled them up in the palace garden. And the king climbed the pile of books and it was a little wobbly at the top, but he jumped and he jumped and he jumped and he jumped and he reached and he reached and he reached. But he still could not reach the moon. So he called to his servants and he said, Servants, <clears throat> bring me every book in the country. And his daughter said, Daddy, you can't do that. I'm the king, I could do what I like. So his servants went out and they went to every library. They went into every school. They went into every house. They went into every bookshop in the whole entire country. They had fiction books. They had maths books. They had textbooks. They had recipe books. They had scary looking business books. They had magazines, they had fairy tales, they had every type of book. And they brought all of the books back to the palace gardens and they piled them up 
higher and higher and higher and higher and higher until you could barely see the top. And the king, he climbed and 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 he got to the top of that pile and ooh, it was very wobbly now. And he jumped 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 and he reached and he reached and he reached and he reached and he reached. He could not reach the moon. But then he had an idea and he called down to his servants and he said, servants, bring me every book in the world. And his daughter said, daddy, you can't do that. But the king said, I'm the king, I can do what I like. And he sent his servants out and they went into every country in the world. They came here to Morpeth in the UK and they went to Cape Town in South Africa and they went to Beijing in China and they went to every single city and every single village and every single house, whether it's at the top of a mountain or the bottom of a valley. And they bought every book in the world. And they brought them all back to the king and they piled them up in the palace garden. And it took them a long time now. It took them probably a couple of days to get that pile piled really, really high. And then the king climbed it. And then he got to the top and ooh, it was really wobbly now. And the people down below looked so small. And he looked up to the moon and it looked really close. And he thought to himself, surely I can reach the moon this time. So he jumped and 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 he reached and he reached and he reached and he reached and he reached. <sighs> but could he reach the moon? He could not. But he had another idea. So he called down to his servants and he said, Charlotte, <clears throat> get me every writer in the world and get them to write me a new book. And his daughter said, Daddy, you can't do that. And the king said, I am the king. I can do what I like. So his servants went and they got every single writer in the world and they got them to fill in all of the paper in the world. So all of these authors, they wrote all of these new books, they filled up all of those pages, and then people bound the pages together, and then the servants took the new books to the palace garden where all of the other books in the world were, and they piled them up so, 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 so high, so that by the time you got to the top of the pile, it was freezing cold, and the servants, they were a little scared to do the piling, but still they did it, and eventually that pile was high, and it reached up, up, up into the sky. So the king climbed to the pile and it took him a long time now, but eventually he got to the top and it was really wobbly because he was really high up. And then even though it was wobbly, he jumped and 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 he reached 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 and he reached. But could he reach the moon? He could not. But he was so close. He just needed one more book. So he called down to his servants, servants, I need one more book. His servant said, your majesty, there are no other books. Every book has been written and every book that's been written has been printed and every book has been brought to your garden. There are no more. So the king said, servants, Bring me the book from the bottom of the pile. And his daughter said, Daddy, you can't do that. I'm the king. I could do what I like. So the servants pulled the book at the bottom out of the pile. And as soon as they did that, what happened to the pile and the king? Do you know? Yeah. The whole pile of books. <laughs> fell down and the king fell with them 
And he had a big bruise on his head and a big dent on his crown. And his daughter said, Daddy, I told you, you couldn't do that. And the king realized, yeah, he couldn't do that. And now a whole week had passed. It was the day of the princess's birthday, the day of her big party. And he didn't have anything to show her or give her. But that was okay, because all the princess wanted was her daddy to read her favorite book with her. So after the party, the two of them sat together in the palace library and they read her favorite book. And the king learnt his lesson. And the princess and the king and all of the people in the whole world, when they got their books back, lived happily ever after. Hello, it's so nice to be joining you at the Morpeth Gathering, uh, even online. And the first one is just about kind of asking nature to give us an idea. Um, rather than relying on ourselves, let's look around us and see what nature has to say. Uh, and from there, I'm going to go into a song, I'm going to reach. And this one, I really want you to reach up tall as if you're a tree stretching up to the sky. Uh, and it's just a little chorus, really. Uh, I hope you'll enjoy joining in with some actions. So, first of all, the little nature round, uh, which goes like this.
gonna reach, reach for the sky. I'm gonna reach, I'm gonna reach, I'm gonna reach till I know why, till I know. I'm gonna reach, I'm gonna reach, reach for the sky. I'm gonna reach, I'm gonna reach, I'm gonna reach till I know why. That's the kind of chorus that's going to stay in your head all day. So thank you very much for listening and joining in and um, wishing you all the best and enjoy the rest of today's Morpeth gathering. Goodbye. Bye.